Um, hello everybody, so welcome back to the English Law Channel. Carol with the talk looking at breach of duty. Um, so what is a breach of duty? Well, that hasn't changed since the ruling of Blythe against Birmingham Waterworks, 1856. Um, and it was found that to avoid breach or negligence, the defendant must uh, uphold a standard of care expected from a reasonable person. Seems very unreasonable to say a reasonable person. I mean, what's that? Who's the reasonable person? My idea of a reasonable person might be different from yours. Anyway, that's crucial. The man on the clop clapham omnibus. What would he think or do? Um, negligence is the omission to do something which a reasonable man, guided upon those considerations which ordinarily regulate the conduct of human affairs, would do, or doing something which a prudent or reasonable man would not. Close quotation. That was the ruling of the court. So there are two um, aspects to this breach of duty uh, inquiry. Number one, we must decide the standard against which the dependent's behaviour in the action of negligence must be judged. That's a matter of law. And number two, we must consider the factors which go to decide whether the defendant has fallen below the requisite standard of care. Now this is a, a matter of fact, um, but the case law gives us some indicators about the factors that a court has to take into account when looking at this second stage of the breach, breach of duty inquiry. So um, we have to think about a reasonable man and, and an objective man. So whether the um, defendant in the issue is judged as a reasonable man or a reasonable skilled man, the law still applies this objective test of reasonableness. Therefore, any characteristic the defendant has or characteristics shared amongst a particular group of defendants, for instance, inexperience, because he's relatively new at the job, and which might affect his ability to perform a task to a reasonable standard, are not to be considered when deciding whether or not he's fallen below the required standard of care. This is, this is one a sort of a passage which is often pointed to. Lord Miller in Glasgow Corporation against Moore, an appellate court case, 1943. The standard of foresight on a reasonable man is in one sense an impersonal test. It eliminates the personal equation and is independent of the idiosyncrasies of a particular person whose conduct is in question. Close quotation. So it doesn't matter if you're very experienced or very inexperienced or, or highly skilled or rather unskilled in this area, the standard of duty is the same seems harsh to me. Anyway, it's an objective test. An abstract reasonable person is put into the situation of the defendant and who is expected to have the same general knowledge and comprehension of risks, the things that everybody knows, um, that um, if it's raining, the road is likely to be slippery, or children um, don't have the same foresight and wisdom as adults. Um, a reasonable person is, is assumed to know that. Now, the actual defendant might be a complete ignoramus or might be a genius. Nevertheless, we hold him still to that reasonable standard. It's judged by that abstract impersonal standard. But a reasonable man is meant to be truly objective, so whether the objective test is justifiable in this fault basis of reliability is something which is very contentious. Well, let me look at the standard of care. You bear, must bear in mind that the defendant is to be judged by how a reasonable person would behave at that time and in that said situation. Um, the defendant can't be judged by having benefit of hindsight or what he found out later. Um, uh, we must judge him based on the knowledge that he had, that was available at the time, not what subsequently been discovered. Um, so we must make allowances for um, the particular situation of the defendant. Was he in a great hurry? Was it a very stressful situation or something like that? But um, that they don't make it easier on the person on the basis that he was a klutz, um, that he was infirm or that he was elderly again seems to be rather hard on the on the defendant. There are a lot of cases around motor vehicles and the standard of care is a reasonable driver. If the driver is an outstanding race car driver, nevertheless it's still that same standard, not an unduly high standard. If the person has just only just passed his test or is even a learner, well then we don't go easy on that person. Okay. Alright. So how about defendants with particular skills or qualifications? Now, in many reported cases, a person has a particular skill, as in he or she is qualified in a certain profession, and therefore is judged by a reasonable person who is in that profession, not an ordinary member of the public. You judge a surgeon by the standard of a surgeon, not by a reasonable man who's not a surgeon, because the great majority of us are not. Um, so the defendant is compared to other people uh, who are in that profession. Now, that's sometimes very tricky. So there's sometimes a doubt as to exactly what skill or qualification the person has. Um, is this of as as any surgeon or a surgeon of that particular area? 
for them to be judged against. And there's, there's also um, a very broad group, for instance, motorists or physicians, and these can be subdivided into lots of uh, smaller categories to compare them. Bolam against Free and Hospital Management Committee, 1957, was a leading case about this. Um, um, the standard of care has to be applied. Um, and we have a look at we'll look at this, the the skill that a doctor is supposed to have. So in the Bolam test, the claimant um, agreed to undergo electroconvulsive therapy (ECT), and during that, a fracture of the pelvis was sustained. The matter before the court was whether the physician had been negligent in not giving a relaxant drug before the ECT, and um, therefore, or not providing a restraint to the patient during the during the ECT because the person is liable to thrash about and may suffer an injury, as indeed transpired. But the evidence was their practice of various physicians about this relaxant drugs before ECT treatment, so there was a, a body of opinion amongst the medical profession that said, yes, these relaxant drugs ought to be administered, but there was another body of opinion said that, no, they shouldn't be because that can lead to fractures. Um, so the judge was McNair, and he said, in ordinary cases, generally said, you judge it by the action of a man in the street. He is an ordinary man. In the one case, you said you judge it by the conduct of a man on top of the Clapham omnibus. He is the ordinary man, but where you get a situation which involves the use of some special skill or competence, then the test as to whether there'd be negligence or not is a test, not a test of the man on top of the Clapham omnibus, because he's not, not got a special skill. The test is the standard of an ordinary skilled man exercising um, and professing that special skill. A man need not possess the highest expert skill. It is well established a law that is sufficient if he exercises the ordinary skill of an ordinary competent man exercising that particular art. Close quotation. By art, in this case, it means um, uh, medical qualification. So therefore, the Bolam test it was set. So what's its applicability? So it's applied in many professional situations. It could be applicable to architects, barristers, solicitors, indeed. Luxmoor, May against Messenger. May Baverstock, 1990. Moy against Petman Smith, 2005, went to the House of Lords. So the issue is in defining which group the defendant belongs to um, and what skill they supposedly have. They might want to downplay their skills in order to make themselves less liable. In Phillips of Whiteley, 1938, the defendant who pierced the claimant's ears was a person to be judged against a reasonable surgeon or a reasonable jeweller. I mean, either could pierce ears. You'd think the standard of a jeweller would be rather lower. In Shakur and Situ, 2000, um, there was an analysis of how to deal with the practitioner of traditional Chinese medicine. Was a person to be um, judged against a, a qualified medical practitioner or a traditional doctor um, practicing traditional Chinese medicine? Um, in Wilshire against Essex Health Authority, 1988, the Court of Appeal threw out the argument that an inexperienced doctor owes a lower duty of care. It's well established. We don't make allowances for that. And Glidewell, the Lord Justice, he was, the, he was sitting on the case, said, the law requires that the trainee or learner be to be judged by the same standard as his more experienced colleagues. Um, if it did not, inexperience would frequently be urged as a defence for an action to professional negligence. In FB against Princess Alexandra Hospital, NHS Trust 2017, the same approach was, was um, uh, confirmed, and it said there was a delay in properly diagnosing a child's uh, condition and that that led to brain damage. So Lord Justice Jackson said, whether doctors are performing their duty, the normal role of acting up, they're judged by the reference to the post they're fulfilling at the material time. Close quotation.